Good evening and welcome to the March 19th meeting of the Transportation Committee. Um, we have members of the committee here tonight as well as members of the staff. Um, so first order business, call the meeting to order. Um, second, um, we're actually going to jump right into the committee discussions tonight. So the first item, uh, we had a, an email concern with speeding in the Watersong neighborhood and a request from, for some additional signage. Amy, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure, yeah. So we were contacted by a resident who uh, was concerned about speeding in the Watersong neighborhood. Um, I believe they had come in a couple of years ago with a similar complaint, um, and it was determined at that time that speed bumps or speed humps were not applicable to the situation, so they were curious about any signage options that could be installed instead of in lieu of you know speed humps. So um, I know that there's already signage uh, when you come into the neighborhood, both at Watersong Trail and uh, the other entrance down on Sea Watch Trail. So if we were going to put in signage, anything like a slow down sign or a children at play sign, it might be a good idea to put it at the areas where we already have signage um, at the entrances to the neighborhood. But of course, I'd like to open it up to the committee for any thoughts. Yeah, typically we, if we do put signage, would just be at the entrance ways and you know, we don't typically do signage once you're into the neighborhood, obviously it's clear that you're you know, within a neighborhood or there are children mm -hmm. and, and families in there. Um, we can look and make sure the you know, the speed limit signs are in compliance with town code and regulations. Um, you know, we could look to, um, you know, put the speed card in there, you know, at some point. I know we've got a kind of a long, long list of, of locations um, of requests already, um, but that would be something once true spring rolls around, um, you know, once the weather uh, gets a little better, you know, we could look at putting the speed feedback card out around town, um, but that's something I guess we can you know, review the existing signage in the neighborhood and then, um, you know, follow up with a resident from there if that sounds good to the rest of the group. That sounds good to me. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. So our next item, uh, we had a concern from a resident on Northrop Road uh, concerning speeding. Um, so Northrop Road is just uh, two streets north of the town hall. Um, this is something we've kind of looked at, um, I think it was a couple of years ago. Um, Northrop Road is kind of on the eastern part of it, is kind of a more of a rural area, and then on kind of the western part of it, mm -hmm. um, more homes, a little more you know residential in there. There's some um, um, barn structures that are closer to the road. Um, that was part of the concern the, the resident shared is that you know people are exceeding the speeds. Um, so we went back and looked at our data. So um, we did a count on the east end by 250 back in 2007. Um, 80, 85th percentile of 42. Um, and then we most recently did a count on the western portion um, closer to Jackson in 2017 that had an 85th percentile of 35. Um, so I think first and foremost, it's been seven years since we've counted anything. Um, I think wait until we get better weather, put our speed counters back out, kind of see what we're working with um, in that area. Um, but the request was for a 25 mile an hour speed limit sign in that area. So I think first, as we typically do, is gather the data, understand what the speeds are, um, you know, kind of what's happening now. And then, you know, so I think we'd probably collect the data in April. Um, so I, my recommendation is we kind of table this to a May agenda item, um, you know, for the committee once we've got the data in, in April, we could come back in May and see what we're looking at and then make recommendations from there. Um, subsequent to that, uh -huh. sorry, go ahead. So Northrop is totally 35 mile per hour? I believe Speed. it is now. <coughs> um, we can pull up the Google Street View and go down it. Um, and kind of look at, at this street, but I know they're specifically, we're looking for 25 kind of on that western end that it, as it went past the, those, okay. those barns. And mm -hmm. um, once we get that up, we can kind of show those barns, you know, are, are close to the road and I understand their, their concern. You know, they're very close to the edge of the right of way and mm -hmm. maybe even in the right of way and in, in portions of it. But um, I know that's why a couple of years ago, this committee moved to add some signage to saying, 
you know, slow down, you know, okay. children ahead or. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so this is. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, oh, so I'm just explaining where this is. So this is on the uh, west end, like looking east. Over here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it starts so, on 35 there. Yeah, Jackson Road's okay. behind us. Yeah, I can uh, jump to the other side and see what kind of signage we have here. Yeah, so it's 35 all through right 35. now. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to kind of head west down to where those... It's about halfway down. Yeah. Yeah, keep going, and then you can see the the barns. Okay. It's kind of mm -hmm. very rural character here. Mm -hmm. You're going past. It's a um, property. They you know do landscaping, grow trees, and stuff. Um, so it's kind of a rural character. And then this is where we looked at before. As you start to see a few homes, um, and then this is where we put up the signage or mm -hmm. voted to put up the signage to kind of have a slow down sign ahead, which I think is kind of hidden. Or maybe we just passed it. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was the children at play sign we kind of put ahead, and then here's where the road kind of, you know, narrows down as you kind of approach these two barns. You go a little further. And then you can kind of right in this area. You've got one barn that's obviously very close, mm -hmm. likely in the right of way on the one side, and then the other barn on the other side of the road. Mm -hmm. As you kind of pass through that area, so I think that'll be a good spot to kind of see what the existing speeds yeah, are in that. Yeah. 180 degrees. That one barn on the south side is is more difficult with sight distance. Mm -hmm. So if you're coming through there pretty quick, and somebody's trying to get out. Yeah, I'm gonna have a blind driveway situation for that house. Spot, yeah, mm -hmm. very close. I agree. Do the do the traffic counts. Yeah. Let's get the 85th percentile speeds and. See what we're looking at. I agree with that. Okay. So just knowing the time frame of uh, that, and for the the public and the resident, and you know, with concern, we'll likely put this as a held item until May. So then okay. uh, in <coughs> April we can do our counts and then uh, get that information, share that with the committee ahead of time, and then May we'll bring that back on for discussion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else on this one? No. Okay. Um, item number three, uh, the request has come uh, back up. Uh, we discussed this uh, a couple of years ago uh, for a, a convex mirror at the corner of Liberty Street. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of the inside curve. So if you, Amy, you go up to the, it's at 789, so the left and right there. Um, just as the, the resident um, pulling out of there to kind of see around the bend. Um, I know we've recently, reached out and been discussing with RG&E about, we had a request on Clark Road about the convex mirror and, and rg has come back and said, we don't want anything mm -hmm. attached to our poles. It's not our, mm -hmm. our stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so I know we're looking at is, you know, you would have to add an additional pole. Not really thrilled about another pole, you know, in the right of way. So now you're looking at, you know, is there a pole on private property across the way that, you know, isn't, owned or maintained by the town, which kind of adds some to mm. some difficulty or, or challenge. So um, the request came in, wanted to, you know, share it back with this this group, um, you know, for more conversation. Um, this is something that came into Eric, but you know, understand the concern. It's just challenging if our genie doesn't allow it on their pole, then where else do you put it? And then, you know, adding additional poles. Amy, I don't know if you can do, I'm sure you're already working on Street View. If you could pull up the street view for this area as well, it's yeah coming around that bend. So, I mean, logically, you've kind of got the rg e pole across the street, you know, right behind the the curve arrow. Um, you know, kind of make the most sense. Um, what about trimming those trees? I mean, if you remove those trees, you'll have better sight distance. Yeah, the person pulling out, looking left, and. Instead of putting another fixed object in the right away. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. Are those trees on the right of way or are they on private property? They're probably on the right of way. They're 
probably pretty close. I mean, I know Liberty's a, a skinny right away. Um, I don't even know if it's 49 and a half, but we can look at that. But I mean, that's an option we could. Can you back up a little bit on the Google Earth? Yes. Yeah, I think if uh, it's hard to tell from this picture. I mean, even if you took the one down on the end. But I think if you take out those trees, uh, do a little regrading there, you'll, you'll get quite a bit more sight distance. Yeah. And it will eliminate the need for the mirror. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, between now and. Whenever we, you know, let's say, we don't know if we need to table this one. I think we can, you know, talk to the property owner, see where the right of way is, um, you know, talk with DPW and see if that's a viable option. Um, you know, whether those are in the right of way and there are trees or whether they're on private property, but maybe the property owner, you know, is, is willing to take those down for the sake of sight distance. And so I think that's where the request has come from. I think that's a, a multi-unit building there, so I, I would assume if it's a betterment for them and helps their sight distance, then I would hope they'd be open to it. I would think you'd be able to take them down if they're a sight distance issue. But yeah, I absolutely okay. work with the property owner if it's on their property. And even still, I mean, if it's on our property, the town's property, then we still want to work. Oh, yeah, we would still communicate with them what's going on and the concern, but that's the side it's coming from. So if they're sharing the concern about sight it's distance, then... Spot, and there's quite a bit there that is really limiting your sight distance. I mean, if you, again, this is difficult for Google Earth. You really have to go out there and look at it. Yep. Mm -hmm. but I think a little investigation. Okay. So, so is the mirror for a person being able to see a car coming or going? Yeah, so those uh, residents on the inside of that curve pulling out of that driveway to kind of see uh -huh. around left behind them, if you want to kind of say they could see somebody uh -huh. coming. So if they're pulling out, Going right or left, it's kind of hard to mm -hmm. see. Yeah, as Amy's showing around that curve of somebody's coming up Liberty Street, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it makes it difficult for them to kind of see. So they're looking for a mirror if it's up across the way on the utility pole. Right. So it's they, their driveway is the. Is the yeah. So they might welcome this. That's what I say. You know, whether it's in the right of way or on their property, mm -hmm. if that's a, a betterment to, to them seeing better, then you would think they'd be open to, you know, working with us on that or you know. Yeah, making that a better situation, but even if those first Again, look, three... Looking at the grades, it's tough to see here, but it looks like it. That might be a good solution. At least as you pull up, you can at least hmm. look over your shoulder and it gives you a little bit better sight distance, as I'm sure um, it's not going to be perfect, but looking in a mirror, seeing mm -hmm. across the way and down, you know, isn't a, a to perfect be a solution. It has a large mirror for that to be effective. And yeah. yeah. Large is, I mean, large. Yeah, let's really? say a small little mirror. You really yeah. not? Do you, <laughs> really do you pick up any view off of the eighteen-inch diameter mirror? We're talking about mm -hmm. like a four-foot diameter mirror for that to be effective from where they're where they're approaching the, uh, the roadway. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay. We'll share that back with them and see where where they'd like to go. Um, next item, uh, item number four, um, we've heard from the county. The county is investigating the option of putting bike lanes on county roadways. Mm -hmm. um, so this, and they've not committed to anything yet. They're just kind of investigating it, but thought it best to come through this community, or this community, this, this um, committee first. As part of that caveat um, is that there needs to be no standing signs every 200 feet down the road. Uh, and if the county installs them, then they would look to basically turn that over to us. Um, so we'd be responsible for the signage once those are installed. So they would do the initial installation. They would stripe the bike lanes, but then basically look that the signage would be the towns to own and maintain after that was installed. Okay. So they're looking out in East Penfield, North South roads uh, that meet the requirement. Um, so basically they said they need 32 feet of road pavement to put it in to 11 foot lanes and then five foot shoulders. Um, they can stripe it and then stripe it as a bike lane. But one of the caveats with that um, is having that signage every 200 feet that basically says no standing along that, that shoulder area. So um, they haven't said exactly where, they haven't said mm -hmm. what, but kind of wanted to run it by this group, see the thoughts you know, of, of the committee first, whether we're supportive of it. 
obviously then the conversation would continue on with the town board and then ultimately, you know, it'd have to be some sort of intermunicipal agreement with us in the county as whether that made sense or not. Mm -hmm. But I know we've got a group that's gonna be coming in next month that wants to talk about connectivity, walk, bike, Penfield and, you know, connectivity of sidewalks and whatnot. So I know we'll continue to hear more you know, groups advocating for, you know, bike ability, walkability in this community, but that's something we kind of just heard from the county. It sounded like an interesting, you know, opportunity if they were willing to, you know, stripe it and add that stuff in there. The signage every 200 feet sounds a bit excessive to me and the, the visual impact of that. I'm just trying to visualize what that would look like on a Harris or a Salt or a, you know, something in a more rural area of how that would look. Um, mm -hmm. But any initial thoughts, feedback, concern about that? I really need to go back and look at some of our previous uh, information about bike lanes. But we had someone, I think, who was involved with that before that was on the committee. And so I know we, we had a, we a lot bike of master plan we did back yeah. in 2008. You know, it's kind of dated now, so we're looking at and through the last uh, most recent comprehensive plan doing an active transportation plan. So that's something, you know, we'll get into and, you know, you know, involve this, you know, committee in with it. So um, I think that's more stuff we'll see coming up, but this was just something that they kind of floated out. I think they're looking and kind of okay. checking the temperature of different communities and to see what their interest is. I would say we need more information on exactly where and what their limits are. And <clears throat> you know, it's a great concept, but let's see what they're thinking about. Okay. Anything else? Mm -hmm. I say it's hard. I don't have specifics. I don't have areas and spots. It's just kind of, would we be interested? You know, I think it's uh, I think it's a good concept. I think you know I like the idea of making Benfield more bikeable. Mm -hmm. um, I have some concern about you know the signage and look and you know if somebody clips the side and takes out six signs, then now the town's on the hook to put six signs back up. Um, mm -hmm. But I think we need more information, as you said, to kind of react fully to it or at least give a, a recommendation to the town board on it. And who is this that's coming in May? Um, in April, oh, yeah. we've heard from, um, so it's the Color Penfield Green group. So it's a local um, grassroots group. Um, they've been active in some different areas through sustainability. Um, they're creating a group called White Walk Bike Penfield. Okay. So I think they're, they were looking to come into this meeting, um, but wanted some more information I shared with them. We're looking to have a sidewalk. Um, public information meeting come in April. So typically March, April of every year, we kind of put out to the community, where would you like to see sidewalks across the community? So I recently shared with them the requests that we've had in the past couple of years, you know, showing the interest we have. We just, obviously the, the, money, the money we have doesn't equal the demand that we have. So we've got almost $2.5 million worth of requests for sidewalks and we've got a $200,000 sidewalk budget, so <laughs> that's up to the town board to figure out, you know, where the priority is. Um, so I think they want to kind of piggyback off of that. So I shared our list with them, and I think they just want to kind of come talk to this group and just kind of advocate for connectability between parks, connections by schools, you know, filling in gaps, which, you know, something we've been doing for mm -hmm. for years in the engineering department is trying to fill in the gaps as the developers build their piece, then we kind of fill in the gaps, you know, in between and try to make, mm -hmm. you know, and feel more walkable and bikeable. But this was kind of timely with this, and then I think we may hear more if, if they request to come in next month, so. Okay. Um, the, if there's anything else on that one, the, um, the next item, and this has come up more frequently, um, so I thought something we should discuss, um, and then I'll look to adopt, is um, we've had more and more requests for crosswalks, and we're also getting more and more requests for the, the flashing beacons or the RFBs, um, as they're known, so I think, it's something that we as the town, um, this committee should look at uh, creating a policy on when they're installed, kind of what the process is to get them installed. Um, and the county has their own policy. So we um, included that in your materials ahead of the meeting. And I think it's something, again, we're not gonna decide tonight, uh, but I think that's something we should start looking at is do we wanna adopt something similar? 
follow the county's you know procedure, but they've kind of got a, an itemized list. And I don't know if Amy, if you kind of want to highlight some of those, kind of what they require on theirs is for, before they put in a crosswalk or before they put in the RFBs and you know what studies are done and warrants mm -hmm. are met. Yeah, I just pulled up the brochure for the RFBs, the rapid flashing beacons. So this would be considered, I think, like an enhancement to an, uh, an existing crosswalk. Mm -hmm. Or if you were going to put a crosswalk in and it met certain criteria, that's when the RFBs would come in um, under certain speeds and volumes. Um, here's kind of an image of what we're talking about. So it's it's an enhanced pedestrian crossing sign where mm -hmm. you, there's a button and you click it and then it lights up as you're crossing. And currently we have For, some on uh, county roads. We worked with them a couple years yes. ago. So you've got a couple on Baird Road. Mm -hmm. We've got them on five right. mile by the four corners. Mm -hmm. um, but we've had requests from other locations. And I think as these become either more prevalent for requests or mm -hmm. make sure we're consistent, you know, do we go through the, you know, the proper process of, you know, mm -hmm. assessing them and, um, you know, when and where they make sense, when and where they don't. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I say we kind of shared what the county has put together and kind of their procedure for them because I, you know, I expect they're going to come in more often and, you know, this similar as we look at and get requests for speed humps, mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. this is going to be our our new request. So I think having a policy in place to say here's what we do, we get traffic mm -hmm. counts first, you know, then we do a, a pedestrian study, then we do, you know, a, you know, kind of a logical procedure, look at the speeds on the road, just as there says, you know, they put them up between 30 and 45 roads. They're going to be such of an ADT of, of traffic on the road. Correct, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I think it, it alludes to, um, it has to meet these certain criteria, but then there's also a lot of engineering judgment involved. So that would include looking at what signage already exists there and sight lines, that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. So don't know your, your thoughts on looking to develop a policy or um, have procedures uh, in place, so I think we've got some metrics to look at. Yes, because one thing I wrote down, I think you mentioned it could be a case-by-case -case, uh, situation, so it would help to have some kind of... And I know we're going to, you know, we get requests for crosswalks a lot, and yeah. then if they're a mid-block crosswalk and there's nothing around, the RFBs, you can't have... Mm -hmm. Signage, within, you can't have an, you know, within like traffic control in any area, so yeah. you know there's mm -hmm. different things with it. So I think one to share with residents here's kind of the metrics we use to give them some right. information, and it's not arbitrary. But right. then two, you know, we have a, a process procedure to follow if if they are requested. We go through to make sure we're consistent with that. I agree. Okay. Yes. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. I think <laughs> the county procedure is a, is a good starting point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Through that and see. I mean, maybe this is. Very little changes for us. Maybe this makes sense. I don't know. We'd have to go through it more thoroughly. Yeah, just kind of wanted to share that tonight and and, and get that out. And but just something we're looking at is you know kind of if we can standardize something. Obviously, again, we'd have to come up with something, make it Penfields, and then yeah. you know share it with the town board. The town board, you know, would, if we're going to make it a local law or a policy to adopt, right. you know, hold a public hearing so there's you know more process to follow. But this is just kind of the first mm -hmm. step to. Okay. Well, these are we'll these are growing in popularity, and mm -hmm. this will become like a speed hump if we don't get out of it. Right. Well, and I think, yeah, we're going to see a lot more of them and requests mm -hmm. at every corner, or every you know crossing, yeah. and right. every intersection. So I think mm -hmm. get out of it, have a policy in place. Yes. Here's when we install them. Absolutely. Here's when we do it. Here's why. <laughs> Here's the the data and the background mm -hmm. stuff we need to go into to doing that, or the studies that need to be done. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so jumping down, um, traffic concerns in other jurisdictions. Um, again, this is um, got a request or a, uh, shared a concern um, from speeding on Creek Street um, near Mary Hill. Um, this is, again, Creek Street is not a town road, um, so we don't have the jurisdiction to change the speed limit. We don't have the jurisdiction to, you know, to alter the configuration of the road. Um, we will share it with the sheriff's office, you know, the concern for the speeding in the area. Um, mm -hmm. The supervisor meets, you know, monthly with the sheriff's office, so we can share the speeding concern. Um, obviously, we'll also, you know, share it with the county DOT so they can review and see if, you know, there's any, you know, difference in the area, you know, and they can respond. Um, but again, just um, again, we said we'd share it with this committee just as kind of an FYI and informational item. Mm -hmm. um, 
so again, the, the resident understands, you know, we heard their, their concern. Um, it didn't, you know, fall through the cracks, but uh, as Creek Street is not our road, similar to state roads, mm -hmm. um, it falls to a higher uh, agency for their, their review and, and consideration yeah. if anything needs to be changed as far as speed limit or your configuration of the road or the additional signage or not. So mm -hmm. again, this is just more of an informational item, but mm -hmm. just to share with the committee that we had a concern and we'll make sure we pass it on to the proper group. Um, so we had two held items, uh, items we've talked about before, and Mary, oh, I know you yeah. brought them up if you want to kind of yeah, I, share your, your concerns? Well, my husband and I traveled down, um, oh, this is the other one. This is Embry and Scribner. We talked about this once before in here that we, uh, I know Lori and I have noticed persons uh, flying through the stop signs on either Embry or Scribner. And then I saw it <clears throat> more recently, and I just thought maybe we should... Um, uh, keep this in the forefront so that we uh, just for one thing are aware of it and whether or not we need to do some enforcement I guess that's what we do with something like this because there's already four-way stops yeah, in that area but done some enhancements to the stop signs and double signed it and tried to but invariably I, and I want to say it mostly was on the weekend that I noticed someone and it could be either North or south or east or west, either one. I, I, I didn't, you know, keep a tally on how many times they went one way or the other, but um, I do think that is something of concern where you do have stop signs and persons are flying right through them, whether it be the weekend or whatever you're supposed to stop, you know, so uh, that's why I mentioned that. Okay. That was the one thing. Yeah, let me, let me just oh. re okay. respond to that. Um, so yeah, we can obviously share that with the sheriff's office to you know keep an eye on that. I know we've double signed. I think we've double signed stop signs to mm -hmm. raise awareness in the area. Um, and then another thing we shared kind of just before the meeting had started, um, not specifically dealing with the intersection, but dealing with Greenwood Park itself, is oh, yeah. um, we're opening up uh, three new fields at Rothfuss Park, which is just off of uh, Five Mile. Um, you can see it kind of in the southeast corner of at least the screen we're looking at. Um, three new fields there, so they're going to be moving some of the lacrosse mm -hmm. games out of Greenwood Park, so hopefully that'll at least be a betterment. I know we've talked about the parking on the shoulder of, yeah. of Scribner before and some of the issues mm -hmm. that's caused, mm -hmm. so hopefully a little separate than your, your concern at the intersection, but just kind of wanted to share with the community that hopefully that'll be a, you know, a betterment for pulling some of that out of there and at least you know, not as much of an issue with parking on the shoulder and mm -hmm. impacting mm -hmm. the, the roadway with that. So I um, just wanted to share that little piece and I'll okay. let you. And then the next part for me <clears throat> is congestion at the Plank Road schools. Uh, this is the one where my husband and I go through there on our way to the YMCA um, in, in Webster. And uh, the cars, it's, it's about eight o'clock in the morning. I think that I have the t right time because I haven't been that way in a, in a couple of weeks. But they, uh, the cars are dropping off their, their kids. And we talked about this before that uh, the kids are not really taking the school buses, although I do see school buses, but a lot of parents are bringing their children and dropping them off. So when they are coming, and so they would be coming, uh, this would be the north and the south, um, they pull in, well, they actually, they, they line up and they uh, block the way for someone who's not going into the school uh, so that you can't get get around the cars. My my problem with the way that it's uh, you know going is that the car you, you don't know if cars are turning into the school or if they really are want to keep going one way or the other. But it makes it difficult for the persons who are not going to the school to drop off their kids to understand what the cars are going to be doing because they just they block that the road totally. You'd have to see it. It's quite a congestion. And then if you go around, you run the risk of a car coming out of the school driveway and maybe hitting you. But I, I do think there needs to be some solution to that area. There's nowhere else for cars to go because uh, everything else is the school grounds. 
but um, that congestion at that time of day, and then it occurs in the afternoon as well, of course, but I'm, I'm not usually going through there in the afternoon all the time. But um, I wanted to bring raise this so that we could uh, continue to follow this, uh, this problem of congestion during the school year or term, you know, when school is in session, uh, simply because uh, it's just <laughs> confusion confusion for the dri drivers who are not going into the school to drop off their kids. So this, this sounds like a, uh, an issue that you need to bring to the school district. Uh, the the is, school this, district oh, there is, a, is aware. Yeah, yeah, I've been over there and I've been there at 8 o'clock in the morning with the school district. I stood there with the sheriff's office, the superintendent of schools, the facilities guys, and I know they're, they're trying to work on it and they're looking at longer queuing lengths and trying to get teachers outside to get the kids in and out of the car quicker. Um, unfortunately, I think it's in front of a lot of schools and you know, I don't think COVID helped. I think a lot of people, the kids that rode the bus before, right. now the parents aren't having them ride the bus anymore so you've got way too many cars and way too many parents dropping off and they all kind of queue in line until the school opens and the line and everything else, it's just, I think it did occur. I, I mean, after understand COVID. the skirt. It's just hard to yeah. how do you change human behavior, and you can't tell somebody they can't drop their kid off. Um, but I've I stood in the parking lot in the morning with the sheriff and, mm. and with the school district. So okay. they are aware, and I know they're they're trying to find ways. We even talked about, and I think Plank Road North and South, I think, are staggered by a certain period of time. So I think one school starts and then the other school starts, so it's not the same time. Mm -hmm. I think they were looking at, can they gap those even a little bit more? So you get it, one school starts at eight and the other school starts at 8.15 or 8.20, get some people through and then get the other people through. So I know that, to your point, Dan, the school is aware. Um, the sheriff's office is aware. I just don't know if we've got an easy solution to it, but I know at least they were entertaining, mm -hmm. you know, even staggering school starts mm -hmm. and times. It's, we need to get the kids back on the buses, and the right. ten buses can handle, you know, a hundred cars worth of. Mm -hmm. It would you know, help if the but. parents would put on a signal. You know, a lot. I of mean, them put don't. your four ways on if you're sitting on the side. You say all of a sudden the spot opens up, and then they <laughs> no. turn left in front of you as you're going north or south. Right. You know, <clears throat> down the road. I, I, no easy. I would suggest continuing to work with the school district, yeah. but I don't see there's no. You know, geometric changes really are not no. practical here. No, not there because so it's, it's nothing not an over here. Issue. It's it's really a, it's just a, it's an issue on the school property on how they're managing that traffic. Right. Mm. And I know we've seen this at the high school before, and they had property and room at the high school. They've actually wrapped mm -hmm. the drop-off loop around the school to get more people internal. Right. Um, I think with the bus garage moving out of the four corners, that'll help mm -hmm. at the high school area. Um, I know they've looked at some other. You know, solutions in other locations. This one, just the configuration of the property right. and the, the amount of land they own, there's just not enough property to make really a longer queue, or at least an easy mm -hmm. longer queue. But, okay. That was all. Okay. Um, that's all the items um, we had. Um, we did <coughs> just, as a new business, did get an email in today. Um, residents share their concern um, in the uh, Beacon Hills neighborhood. Um, so this is one we've looked at uh, before. Um, so we did some changes to the signage in the neighborhood. Um, there were some stop signs that were in there that um, as we looked with this committee, I think were put in as it was phased. Um, and I think those sign, stop signs were, you know, put in originally. Um, we kind of did an overall review of that um, and our recommendation was to take those signs out. Um, obviously, the neighbor and you know had concerns with those coming out. It's changed the traffic patterns. It's changed the speeds in that area. Um, so I think we need to. Once the weather breaks, we can go back out. We did mm -hmm. put counters out late in the year. Thankfully, the weather was cooperative. So I think November, December, we put them out quickly. Snow was coming. We pulled them up, so we didn't really get a full count. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we'll put them back. Um, you know, as the weather breaks, obviously first day of spring and we're still seeing snow, um, but as April's coming around, hopefully we can put those back out, look at that, and then, you know, we can bring it back to this committee and see if, um, you know, there are some issues. I don't, I haven't heard of accidents there. Mary, I don't know if you've, you're in the neighborhood. I don't know if you've mm -hmm. noticed yeah. anything different, um, but obviously, you know, we'll continue to follow up on, on the, the resident's concern. Right. Um, you know, right in there, the, the, the initial counts we got, 
speed wise at that time was the north side and the south side were you know, very similar 85th percentile. Yes. I know it's a you know a change on the south you know before there were stops and now there's not but um, I think it's something we continue to monitor and then as spring comes and you know speeds are increasing we can um, we've got our uh, we should have a new feedback trailer this year you know put that out there and remind people of what the speed is through that area and you know give people that that reminder then hopefully they mm -hmm. remind them of what the speed is and they're not aware of the speed that, that they're traveling in that area so um, for this one I think uh, my recommendation um, right in it as a new business tonight is let us do some more counts out there uh, let us put the the tube counters out there get the data um, and then we can come back you know likely in our May agenda and follow up as you know further that conversation yeah. okay if anybody else has any other thoughts yes sir you, 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 if you'd like to come up please if you want to share your name and address for the record Here. yep uh, Roman Lender, yep, welcome. Three Cove Circle. Mm -hmm. Hi. The email came from me. Okay. Mrs. Sweeney is my neighbor. Um, <laughs> I wanted to ask a question. When would I be able to comment on this discussion um, outside of today's meeting? I mean, you're always welcome to come in and, and meet with engineering staff. Um, I can give you my information. You can contact me. Um, you know, obviously, we'd like to gather more data ahead of the discussion amongst the group. Um, so, given the weather through March is not usually viable for putting tube counters on the road, um, we'd put them on April, and we can bring it back to discussion in May. If it's back on the agenda, you're welcome to come and address the whole committee. Um, in the meantime, if you want to, you know, contact. Uh, me and the engineering department, you know, we'd be glad to have you in and, and discuss it and, you know, understand your concerns further. Yeah, the email that you were mentioning just yep. now is from me. Okay. okay. And the original one, uh, when the signs were mm -hmm. originally removed, was yeah. also from me. Yep. And we shared shared with this group, and yeah. obviously yeah. just got it. Yes, I, I'm okay. ahead of the agenda, so we mm -hmm. said we we could share it as a new business if we didn't run over time. So we had a little bit of time, so you know wanted to you know share it with the committee. Yeah, uh, send it out to them, and that's all I wanted to know when I would be able to comment if if it is open to comment. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'll have to contact you through email. And yeah. So at this point, it sounds like we'll put it on as a May item. Um, we'll do the counts in between now and then. Um, and then we'll put on as a May item, and then as it comes up in May, you're welcome to come back and address this, address the group. Next meeting for this committee is April 16th. Yeah, I'm thinking unlikely we'd have the the counts right. back by that point. You're welcome to come April 16th, um, but until we kind of have that that data, um, you know, it's kind of hard for the committee to comment and see the speeds and. You know, we can um, see that information. Um, as I said, we'd add it to our list for the feedback cart. And if you've seen those on other roads, it kind of gives you your what the speeds are on the road and flashes as you're going above the, the posted speed limit in the neighborhood. You know, that often seems to help mm -hmm. kind of people to remind them what the <clears throat> speeds are and hopefully, you know, put them further into check. Um, if we see there are excessive speeds in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. you know, then we would add it to our list of streets. We have the uh, the county sheriff to come out and you know, we issue tickets if need be and, you know, to kind of monitor the speeds that are going through there. And if they're excessive, then, you know, we'd look to the sheriff's office to, you know, patrol it. And mm -hmm. hopefully that would remind people to and adhere to better to the speed limit. And we try to put the counters where we are thinking there might be a concern. Like, I think in your email, it was Beacon Hill South that you were, yes. because people are coming straight across. So, if I may comment, uh -huh. um, the point that I want to make to you is, to your point, is a review of the neighborhood as a whole when the signage was changed. In my opinion, I believe was incomplete. There were some mis misunderstandings about the Craig Circle and Braintree Crescent. The assumption of this committee was that there are stop signs on the sides of the Craig Circle and Braintree Crescent. That is an unsignaled intersection altogether. The stop sign at the intersection of Beacon Hills South and Beacon Hills North is also, I don't believe, to some of the points that were made here, is in accordance with the DOT guidance, as I was told, but yet it's still there. And lastly, the request from Ms. Anos was to use a stop sign at the end of the Blue Ridge Drive was to 
a speed control device, which I know you told me at one point that is, it is not used as a speed control device. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be used as a speed control device, but in this particular situation it was. What I'm referring to is with the Beacon Hills, the speeds going downhill past the intersection of Rockhurst and Cove, that's, that curve became extremely dangerous because there is absolutely no speed control. And when you're driving down southwest on Beacon Hill South, from your house, Mary, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. down, to your you house. can't see until you get to the intersection. Presence of those stop signs, I think, served an important role in, I don't want to use controlling speed mm -hmm. because stop sign is not a speed control device, but it served an important role of a reminder to the residents. There are additional points that I was considering because a Rockhurst Drive has 15 houses or 15 town home complexes and it's a large density population versus some of the things that are on Talbot Circle, your neighbors, mm -hmm. there's only five and somewhere around Beacon Hills and Beacon Hills North neighborhoods. So those are the points that I want to make. Okay. I, will, I will reserve my mm -hmm. comments mm -hmm. when I'm allowed to no, comment. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, yeah, thanks, thanks for coming. And I say yeah. we can look at site distance as well as when we're in there, and that, that's part of the equation as well. So um, that's good to know. And I say as we will put the counters out, we'll look at site distance at the same time, and um, we'll come back and do a, another look at it in May. And um, obviously you're welcome to come back at that meeting and I, I would love to continue right. to mm -hmm. be part of the conversation. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. <laughs> Any other new business tonight? No, I don't have anything. No. Okay. Um, so given no uh, further business, um, at this time I'd uh, move to close our meeting. Um, next meeting would be April 16th. Mm -hmm. um, so with that, we'll close the meeting at 5.42 p.m. Thanks, everybody, for coming tonight. Okay.